Yeah, Hakan Ekman is my name. I'm happy um, to have the opportunity to, to show you something today here. Thank you, Hannes. Thank you, Dirk, for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here and pleasure to meet you. Um, I will use the opportunity not to talk about myself today. Uh, we heard about the, um, uh, the connectivity, about mobile networks, a fixed network. That's the purpose of this conference. Then we should talk about exactly this one. And the, the idea is that I give you a snapshot about um, the network performance. Because if you build infrastructure, then there's always a concern um, how it is working, uh, how the users is um, experiencing the, the infrastructure. And that's the, that's the purpose today. <coughs> Starting with, um, uh, with a landscape, uh, we have around 200 million uh, users in the field uh, where we're gathering information. Information like latency, coverage, quality of the coverage, speed. And this information we try to um, um, uh, transfer to metric and then generating, generating the famous umlaut score. And in, in uh, around 85 countries at the moment we see 5G. Now 5G means real users pushing the button, recognizing uh, coverage uh, uh, um, gaps or um, having latency um, uh, problems or experiencing good performance, good coverage, good speeds, good minimum speeds, good YouTube performance. You see that North America and Europe is well developed and also Australia. The color coding is when it is green or dark green is good. When it's yellow, then it is the starting point and the rest is in the middle. We see that Latin America uh, uh, has kicked off the journey. Uh, Africa is a bit behind in the journey, but they have kicked off, for example, in South Africa. We see uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, we see, for example, Spain, we, Scandinavia, all the European countries. And we see also that in the Philippines or in Japan, the journey is, um, is metrolizing. Now we see 5G almost everywhere. And the pilot networks in Africa, it's just a matter of timing when we will see there also uh, the rollout and then the effectiveness there. Um, the world ranking, uh, we have generated a metric always ending up with 1,000 points. And then uh, we're comparing always the same uh, matrix, the same thresholds, and trying to uh, uh, define what is acceptable for a user, and then generating these metrics every week. Every week we have these metrics, and we, when we go a bit deeper, uh, who's leading in these metrics? Uh, the uh, Switzerland is leading. No, on purpose, the operators are not mentioned today. <laughs> we, we can talk about this uh, during the lunch. The Kuwait and uh, Netherlands, we see Singapore as an example. We see Greece, very strong. We see South Korea, Canada, US, UK. You see that everyone is contributing. And on the top positions, we see here, when you compare the coverage, the quality of the coverage, the speeds, the latency, all what is relevant for the user, then we see here, and the top three, Switzerland, Kuwait, and Netherlands. The scores are at around 880 to 890. The mature networks, the best networks, when you co consider all the, all the uh, technologies worldwide, are ending up with 950 to 960. Means we are we're coming uh, close to really the, the end game, I would say, in Switzerland and in Kuwait, Netherlands, but the other countries are following. Just take an example, US. It's a big country, it's a big country, and we have there um, the situation being a competitive with Germany uh, or UK in a country like, uh, like uh, the US or Canada. No? Here um, is the development of the journey in Europe, uh, starting in January 21 until uh, June 22. You see that in Scandinavia or in Germany, Spain, and all the countries, we see positive trends. No, no stagnating. Just during the, the uh, challenging time of COVID, the operators continue to develop. Not to develop, to roll out, to optimize the networks. This is a big statement. No? Almost everyone in the, in the industry uh, has continued during the challenging time developing uh, and rolling out infrastructure. 
The same picture here for uh, North America and Latin America. Just look to, to Canada and then to the US. You see a big jump in the scores. Means when you uh, want to have in a country like Canada and, and in the US uh, this development, you have to um, implement and you have to roll out 5G in the whole country, not just uh, in cities or in specific areas. And when we talk about our assessment, we're assessing every 80 meters. Every 80 meters in the country, we're assessing the latency, the speeds, and the coverage, and also the quality of the coverage. Now, when you have 5G on the phone, you're pushing the button, it's not 5G anymore, it's 4G. That's also considered in the methodology. There's really 5G here. You see also in Latin America, they're catching up. Um, and uh, it's just a matter of timing that they will catch up with the scores we see in North America. Um, when we talk about connectivity, then Open Run is also coming to play. You heard about Open Run. Uh, for me, as a, a technical person, it's important how Open Run is working. Is it really uh, functionally working? Are the features there? Is carry aggregation working? How is the performance? And um, uh, for this purpose, we built up our own open run network. That's our rooftop. No, that's really in Aachen. And it's uh, effective already. And that's a snapshot uh, of the only deployment which I would see as uh, mature at the moment is in Japan. Uh, and here selected the metropolitan city Tokyo. Um, our scores are ending up with 1,000 points. And you see that uh, the deployment in Tokyo after now, I think, one and a half year uh, deployment uh, is at 9.45. When you compare this with the performance in other metropolitan cities with other uh, operators, then you see, for example, it's competitive with Atlanta, with Johannesburg, with Milan, with Rome, with Seattle, Sydney, Zurich, uh, New York. It looks like the technology itself is working. Uh, and in, in our scoring, uh, we have 84 KPIs. You cannot have a high score when you just are okay with one KPI. You have to be really consistently okay and above uh, the average <coughs> to achieve this, uh, these results. When we go a bit deeper, um, just looking to the coverage metric, which is on the left end, then we see that in Tokyo it was 100% uh, coverage, means there's no, no spot without coverage, uh, like also in Seattle or in Atl Atlanta, also in New York, and, uh, their operators have been really covering 100% coverage. When we look a bit into the um, uh, performance, and here uh, taking, for example, the speeds, the speeds are comparable, and the speed metrics are minimum, average, and maximum speeds. Now we are really considering the whole uh, sampling, and we see that here, it's competitive. Um, coming to the uh, um, latency metric here, uh, here, we have seen there are some gaps. No, there's still some room to improvement. Uh, it's the latency. No, the, and it's uh, um, across um, the, the, the region means um, uh, latency is something all the operators can still work on and uh, they're working on. And, um, and we heard about this today with the tower companies, what, what work they are doing the, uh, and, and what uh, investments the companies are doing to improve, for example, with fiber deployment, the latency and other initiatives. The mobile part is uh, one aspect important for the consumer, but also the, uh, when you are at home, the uh, connectivity at home is always a concern. You, know, you have, um, you have uh, working from home, you have all the kids uh, doing TV, gaming, uh, then five people in the same moment are penetrating the, the CPE, then Wi-Fi is not working. Therefore, this uh, connectivity at home is since, not only since COVID, but especially since COVID, a special, has a special attention and therefore we have also generated um, two years back a metric regarding the fixed network. Again, 200 million users, the sampling here is uh, very relevant. And when we look here to the, um, to the landscape, then we see that um, a similar pattern with North and uh, America and, and Europe, but also in Latin America, uh, very strong uh, 
uh, fixed network performance, uh, also in Asia Pacific, in Africa, um, due to the, the, the economics for sure is a bit behind, but the, the situation in fixed looks better in Africa than, for example, with the 5G, what we have seen. Also here, when we look to the top uh, uh, um, networks and the top countries versus the ones being at the end, also here, uh, Switzerland is leading. Uh, the Switzerland is leading, South Korea and Iceland. Then we have UK very strong, uh, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Singapore, Spain, Ireland, Denmark, but also Germany we see there, and also Austria. Um, the, um, here Europe, as an example, is contributing well, but we have with South Korea, with also, the, um, also with, uh, with Canada and others uh, countries contributing. You see that um, the, the, especially the African countries are in the, um, in the end of the uh, ranking, but it's just a matter of timing when the uh, deployment is continuing that they will catch up. Looking a bit to the metrics, download speed is, a, is an important one. A lot of people are just looking to this matrix, therefore we said, okay, let's, let's look into this. Our metric is ending up here with around 494 points out of the 1,000, around 49% of the score. And you see that uh, uh, the best operator in the US and the best operator in Canada is very close to have the full score. The same is in Australia. And when you look, for example, to Latin America with Brazil, Argentina and other countries also here, we see strong contribution. And you see, for example, in Switzerland, with 494, the maximum score. Now, there, it looks like there's an operator targeting the maximum score. And you see also Scandinavia, you see Germany, Austria, you see also Spain strongly contributing. In, uh, in Africa, we have South Africa as an example, but also in the Middle East, there are operators catching up um, and um, having very strong uh, uh, down, uh, download speeds. And here is always the minimum, what every customer is getting, then the average and the maximum. We are really uh, counting everything what we see in the field. Upload, here the scoring is up to 200 points. Here we see that in, in, again in, U, um, in the US, there's one operator with 240. Um, you see Switzerland with 250, no, that's the maximum uh, score you can get, but also Brazil, Australia, South Africa, um, but also here India as an example uh, is really doing well. It, it looks like that uh, the, the minimum speed to have video, to have uh, to working from home is guaranteed. That's I think uh, was one main, main of the, uh, the main challenge, which is here um, not a challenge anymore. Even in the African countries, the speeds we, we see are, um, are enough to, uh, to work from home, as an example. Latency, when we look to this metric, that's definitely a challenge. Now, when you look to distances, uh, thousands of kilometers, that, that is something um, to be worked on. Therefore, all the design uh, departments and also planning engineering are working on that, but it's also cost intensive because of the fiber deployment. Therefore, when we look here, US is a bit behind in the latency, but Canada, for example, is really doing well. Australia, no, just um, looking to this, and you see that also in Switzerland, again, there's an operator um, having the, the highest score, but also Austria, also Germany to highlight here, but also India, a country with the long distances, is really doing good. Now we're talking about three, four, five, six thousand kilometer distances uh, um, between nodes. Good, that was the presentation. Uh, a snapshot about uh, how the performance is in the field, which is always my concern when I'm talking to the industry to tell them uh, where they are from the deployment progress. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much, Hakan. <laughs> So we have a couple of minutes left, and maybe there are some questions in the audience for Hakan. Hakan, I just learned from Meta, Facebook, how important network performance is in speed, in latency, and all of that. Uh, could be a good opportunity for you for collaboration. 
or could do meta all of this directly from themselves, from own information? I think uh, um, companies like Meta, they have this data as well. I'm sure they have it somewhere, but I think the, uh, um, when you combine this with in-depth knowledge from the industry, then they should be able to do that. Any more questions? Oh yeah, all hands are rising up. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Um, may, maybe one question. I know it's it's not maybe one answer, but maybe multiple about uh, latency. What's the typical latency that you currently expect in the field? Because uh, Anne was just talking about uh, what we uh, see now from the comparing to the visions of 5G, what has been implemented. So it would be nice to get an idea of where we are right now. For me, when I see with uh, 5G 20 millisecond, that's something I would expect. If someone is targeting 10 milliseconds, then no way. No, then the, the, uh, when, when we look to the different technology, also their, their values, you would usually expect like 50 or 60 milliseconds for the next technology. Or when you have, for example, UMTS 2 through 300 milliseconds, the, uh, what we see is from our perspective enough to, to um, fulfill the demand for HD video, uh, for, for also for gaming and other services. The, um, the latency is not a problematic KPI at the moment. It just, it just has to develop further when the applications are changing and the, the demand is changing, for example, for the enterprise business later, for low latency applications as an example. Uh, how do you see the mobile private networks space as a, a new market to measure? And um, uh, what, these, what challenges do you see in terms of how to benchmark properly those uh, private networks? The private networks, I think here, um, there's a complete new uh, ecosystem is, uh, is there. And I think the, the um, industry is trying to catch up. The traditional vendors, but also new vendors, are um, developing the solution first. When the solution is there, then for sure we have to think about how to measure. Uh, usually these networks are closed. No, therefore, um, the question is, who has the interest to look into this? Is usually the person building this. Therefore, here, uh, I would I would guess um, when a big corporate is developing a, a, a private network, then we can use the same matrix, but it will be in the closed, uh, in a, in a closed uh, user group, the, the outcome. But the, the KPIs and the matrix, the, the features, the, the, the protocols are the same being in use there. <laughs> 